So hello, welcome back to Blake's Den. Something not mini related today, something quite different. I've got this genuine barn find generator. Um, it's a barn find because I found it. Okay, it's technically, technically not in a barn, it was in a shed, but it was under a pile of stuff. It's clearly seen better days. So to give you the backstory on this, I actually started filming this video a year ago. Um, and I did a bit of work on this and I bought a service kit and I changed the carburetor. It's got a new carb on it, new HT lead, new spark plug and new coil. And it would not run. I had fuel, I had spark, it just would not run. Subsequently doing a bit of research, I found out that it is a CDI ignition on this. Um, so that is a, a capacitor discharge ignition system. So if I just spin this round. That is the coil which came with a service kit and that's the coil for later models so as the magnet comes past it charges the coil and then it just fires. This one has a trigger on it which is this other cable so I needed a CDI ignition system. Went online and they were about £130 the cheapest one I saw was 75 and I thought it's a lot of money for something I don't, I don't know it works I mean it, Turns over fine, obviously spark plugs out, so but I've got an idea if this works, I just want to test it. So I've come up with the idea of making my own ignition system. So I'm going to take you over to the garage and I'll show you what I've done. So firstly I need to um, have a shout out to a guy called Harvey Spooner who's got his own channel on here. He, um, he's got several videos of homemade ignition systems and I've just basically copied that idea. So what I've bought there, that's a generic wiring kit for a dirt bike. Chinese dirt bike, it was like £11 or £10 off eBay. Comes with a kill switch, don't need that. Comes with a wiring harness, need that. Comes with a coil. And it also comes with a CDI unit. This is an AC CDI unit. So instead of having a 12 volt uh, DC input, it actually has uh, like about 70 or 80 volt AC input. If you've got a dirt bike or a quad or an ATV, they've got a magneto on them and it normally drives this. My generator doesn't have a magneto on it, but obviously it does have a generator on, but I don't know if that works. So for now, we're just putting that to one side and we're going to use this, which is an almost identical but different DC, direct current CDI unit. So I'm going to give it a, just a hot wire input of 12 volts from a jumper pack. That should give it enough to charge the coil and then when the trigger goes past it should fire at the right time and then we'll have a working engine. So I need to do a bit of assembly on this so yeah let's start putting it together. So yeah if you have to one of these kits just search for GY6 or CDI coil or ATV or dirt bike coil on eBay, there's hundreds of them available. So I put the plug in um, and it's fairly straightforward. So the, the bottom green is a earth, the top blue one or blue and white one is the trigger, so that's that one. Top right is to the coil and then the bottom left is your plus 12. So your black and red is your plus 12 volts, that goes to your trigger. Um, you've actually got two earths coming out of it, both green, they're both common, so uh, one goes to the coil, the other one will go back to the battery, so those two go to your battery. This one I'll have to hack into, that one will go to the trigger sensor, and um, I will also have to put an earth from the trigger sensor as well. So right, let's uh, go back over to the generator and do some cutting. So the trigger, I've just connected it up to my multimeter there. As I spin the engine over, if you watch the uh, watch the display, but let's do that, and it'll be easier for you guys to see. You can see there's a very small change in voltage. If I drop it down to two volts, I've just lost continuity there. Basically, that's what gives the trigger. To the, to the electronics. 
to make it uh, make it fire. So I need to cut this plug off. The green goes to earth. The blue goes to the uh, blue and white trigger wire. So this is very budged up at the moment. But what I've got is those blue and yellow connectors. So that's picking up the earth and the trigger. I've got my negative from my battery pack going to uh, just the middle of one of the earths. And I've got the red going to the red and black there. If I then leave that looking at the spark plug and I turn this on, so that's now live. When I spin over the engine, you might be able to see it spark. I can definitely hear it sparking. So I think we have a spark now. So what do you say we uh, put the spark plug in the uh, generator and see if it runs. So I've repositioned this so it's uh, exhaust is pointing outwards. Turn the fuel on. We've got the power on. The generator side I'm just leaving turned off for now because I don't really want to get involved with all of that exposed wiring, but let's just see if this will run. So let's give it a go. Nothing yet. Let's check all my connections, check my fuel's on, choke is on. Those guys are on, those guys are on. Ah, earth wasn't connected. Right, let's try again. Sparking in the, uh, the cap for the HT, well the HT lead. Don't think it's quite a good fit. Let's give it a couple more goes. Success! That's amazing. That saved me an absolute fortune. Right. Now we just got to make it work properly and make this uh, a permanent connection. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, to kill it, obviously I, I just turned the choke off there whilst it was cold, but you just turn the, uh, the knob on the 12 volt thing to shut it down. A few little things I need to sort out, there was a, quite a lot of arcing and sparking going on from the electrics. So um, I think I've got a few bare wires here and there. So um, yeah, and it was running, as you heard, it was hunting a bit on the idle. Uh, that's fine, I can sort of dial that in. Um, but mechanically, it works. Now, I wonder if a generator side works. The wiring is incredibly suspect in there and it's full of leaves. So I think I'm going to try and get that rewired. And um, we'll see if we can get power off this. Great. So I've deliberately jumped forward a little bit for two reasons. One, what I was doing was quite boring. And two, it involved the 240 volt electrics or the 230 volt stuff. So um, if you don't know what you're doing with that, get some professional help. I'm not a professional. Um, so I sort of deliberately haven't showed that because I don't want any of you killing yourself. So anyway, what I've done is um, I've wired up these uh, outdoor 13 amp sockets. They're just in a, an enclosure. I've made a little lid just out of some scrap metal I had. Put all of the electronics in there. Cleaned all that out. It was all full of leaves and stuff. 
put a, a negative off the back of the coil and those have got these enormous jump leads on which are massively overkill but it's just something I had lying around. Um, I'm just using the, um, so there was originally a 16 amp socket on there um, but I haven't got a anything with a 16 amp plug on so uh, that's why I've put the 240 volt sockets on uh, and they'll be mounted on the top there and I'm just using that for the cable entry at the moment you've got the positive in you've got the HT lead coming out and you've also got the control wires to the uh, the pickup for the um, spark so just to check that this all still works if you look at the spark plug so I've got the system powered on if I just tap that against there so yeah you can see it's sparking you can hear it sparking so I'm happy that I've still got a spark and the wiring I've done is right right so we're going to go for a run test now I've got plugged in an LED inspection lamp so that's like hardly any wattage I've also got plugged in a 1200 watt heat gun so I can actually put a bit of load on it uh, I'm going to start this with the voltage in the off position um, got my power pack connected up just word of note this is still bypassing the low oil level and the on off switch so to kill it I need to kill the power over there so all right let's see if the generator works So as you saw from that last clip, I didn't actually get any voltage output. So I've had a bit of a play around with it and I found out the problem was actually my sockets. Uh, because they had a, an RCD in them and the generator has a floating earth, it sort of didn't like that. So I put on just a single 13 amp socket and I had the inspection lamp in and tested it and it worked fine. Until the LED blew in the inspection lamp. Um, I then checked the voltage output and the voltage output was like way too high, it was like through, over 300 volts. So um, it's still not running right, so I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to have to tune the carburetor and tune the idle. So the idle adjustment is on there and then the carburetor adjustment, I think it's it's that one there. I can't see anything else to adjust the carb. So uh, it runs fine on choke, um, but it doesn't run on sort of with the choke off. So... I'm going to set you up, I'm going to play around with those and I'm going to monitor the voltage output.
Well, I got the voltage stabilized a bit, it's still hunting a lot, so I think I'm actually going to whip the carburetor off and, and clean it out. It's a new carb I fitted last year and it never ran, but um, you know, it could be a blockage in it, so I'm going to take that out and take a look. I've just taken the air filter assembly off, had a look at the carb. Um, I've taken the mixture screw out and just blasted it out. Um, I'm going to play around with this screw as well, which sets the idle speed. I think it does the idle. Yeah, it seems to be that's like at full throttle at the moment, then it seems to back it back out again. And I think it's possibly like gone too low and then it's trying to dive and it's sort of flooring itself and ended up in a loop like that. I also found that this spring wasn't attached at the other end correctly. So hopefully a combination of these factors will mean it works. We, we know it runs quite well with a choke on. So, um, so yeah, um, it's just really when the choke's off and under lower idle. Um, I just need to sort that out. I'm going to have to put the cover back on because the carburetor is now loose. So I'll put the cover back on, I'll start it up and give it one more go. So I had the carburetor apart, I didn't show that bit, uh, but then the uh, pull start packed in, so uh, yeah, I think it must have been sticking and it was uh, staying, the, the sort of prowl was staying out when the engine was running and it just pulled itself apart. So I bought another one, turns out it doesn't fit, so different arrangement on the back, uh, there's more than one type of Honda GX engine, so I think what I'm going to do, I'll just salvage the... Uh, to rope off this one, wrap that around the, what's left of a pulley and just uh, see if it'll run using that. So that was running a little bit better there. Still hunting a bit. Um, but uh, let's put it down to bad fuel. I'm hoping the more it runs, the better it's going to get. So I'm probably, that's probably going to be all I'm going to do with this for now. I think I'll do some more work in a future video. But the last thing I want to do is uh, see how this runs under load. So I've plugged in my 1200 watt air gun, heat gun, and uh, we'll see if we can get it running. This goes round clockwise. Engine turns clockwise at the moment. I'm just uh, putting this on like this. And then obviously when I pull it, it, the whole thing comes off. So make sure there's nothing close to that rotating machinery. So put on there, see how it goes. Nope, well, kicked a lot. Didn't want to go though. One more try. I'll put a little bit more choke on this thing. There we go, that seemed to be working fine under load as well. So I think I'm going to call the video to a stop there. I've still got some more to do on this. Uh, I want to get the AC CDI system working. Uh, I need to get that hunting sorted out. I also need to fix that pull start. But for now, will it run? Yes, it will run. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe and you can follow me on instagram too at blakes10 so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it see you guys in the next video